Hello students, myself Janil. Let us discuss second video lecture, Shear Strength of Soil. In the first part, we have discussed that basic idea of shear strength as well as basic terms, how it is uh, gaining from soil as well as its graphical representation as well as normal stresses, shear stresses, Mohr's circle and uh, some uh, formulas related to that. Let us begin this video lecture with another theory with Mohr's strength theory. Mohr's strength theory is based on a hypothesis of soil failure. Now Mohr has a hypothesis that at the time of failure of soil at failure plane of the soil the failure shear stress is direct function of normal stress that means we can write it as tau f that is shear stress at failure is function of sigma that is normal stress where another thing which comes in the mind that at the time where the soil is failing that stress that ultimate stress is obviously shear strength of your soil so we can also write s uh, in place of tau f so s is equal to function of sigma of normal stress now we can also write tau is equal to sigma into 10 beta because here tau shear stress will be sigma into 10 of beta beta is what here beta will be angle with the resultant as in the previous video we have seen that in the Mohr circle beta was the angle with the resultant so we can write tau is equal to sigma into 10 beta same way now at the time of failure tau will be maximum or we can say shear strength of soil so we can write it as same way at the time of failure we can write beta as phi or beta as angle of obliquity beta is known as angle of obliquity so i am writing the same thing here tau is equal to sigma 10 phi and s shear strength of soil is equal to sigma 10 phi so a mover has derived some formula from the failure envelope of soils so here you can see two graphs having tau versus sigma now in the first graph you can see mover circle number of four circle and green line is showing Mohr's failure envelope. So, so many type of soils are tested, are given pressure, are given failure even. And one failure envelope is prepared from that and from that hypothesis, Mohr's strength theory is derived. Same goes for another graph with a, which is showing point of tangency. Point of tangency, this graph is trying to show that if this is your Mohr circle, the point of tangency of Mohr failure envelope will show failure of this particular soil. So, this is all about Mohr's strength theory. Let us move further to another theory which is Mohr Coulomb strength theory. In investigations, Coulomb found out that at the time of failure, shearing strength of soil will be divided in two components from two components one component will be independent of normal stresses applied to that and that component is having intrinsic cohesion or we can say apparent cohesion and another component namely we can say frictional resistance will be dependent on normal stress which is applied on that soil so he gave an equation empirically that is s is equal to c plus sigma 10 phi here one component is cohesion and second one is frictional resistance so we can plot a graph 
from these lines s is equal to c plus sigma 10 pi here c is constant and it is not dependent on applied normal stress so we can see this graph here c is constant phi is angle of internal friction and it is having a line which is given as name as s is equal to c plus sigma 10 phi now it will depend on your type of soil how the soil is behaving for let us say phi soil for phi soil which is also known as cohesion less soil which is having c cohesion zero it will give you a chart like this tau versus phi where the cohesion is zero so there is no constant height of the graph so it is directly going like this and here s shear strength will not depend on c it will only depend on sigma 10 phi if your soil type is c soil or we can also say it is cohesive soil so there will be no friction if it is a pure cohesion cohesive soil so the graph will stay constant because cohesion the first component it is not dependent upon applied normal stress so the graph will go in a straight linear line manner so we can see c as some constant and phi as zero so s will be directly is equal to cohesion so cohesion will govern its shear strength it is very simpler but if your soil is c phi type of soil i mean mixture of cohesion less and cohesive soil the graph will remain like i have explained in the first place it will be having c as well as phi so s is equal to c plus sigma 10 phi so moore's coulomb strength theory was phenomenal at that time and it gave uh, very revolutionary uh, outcomes at that time let us move to new theory which is modified Mohr coulomb's theory so apparently it looks like at the time of failure shearing strength of soil is dependent upon applied in normal stress but according to terzaghi and our understanding from the chapter soil water we can say that the normal stress is governed by effective stress not the total stress so we can say that the shear strength will be governed by effective stress not the normal stress so we can take sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u from the chapter soil water if we remember that effective stress is equal to total stress minus neutral stress and s can be written as modified by Terzaghi's theory s is equal to c dash plus sigma dash 10 phi dash and here c dash means effective cohesion phi dash that is effective angle of friction and sigma dash that is sigma minus u which is normal stress minus neutral stress will be effective normal stress now let us understand some basic experimental situations shear tests based on drainage conditions so shear tests are defined by different drainage conditions like uu test which is unconsolidated undrained test in this test uu test no moisture is permitted in the first stage first stage means consolidation stage so it is called unconsolidated as well as it is not permitted moisture is not permitted in the even second stage where the specimen will be sheared so this test is called as unconsolidated undrained test it is generally preferred for clays and it is also known as q test q means quick test here as it will give results in few minutes second one is cu test that is consolidated undrained test now in these tests in cu test 
first stage will be consolidation stage and in that stage moisture is allowed or we can say water is allowed to touch that but in the second stage where the specimen is being sheared there will be no moisture allowed it is R test which is in between Q and S it is also known as a rapid test and it is generally used for sudden drawdown cases I mean wherever the drawdown of water is sudden you have to test with this test and the third item according to drainage condition is CD test that is consolidated drainage test now in this stage in both the stages consolidation and shear stages drainage or moisture is allowed so it is done throughout the moisture availability it is giving the results slow and it is known as S test it is generally used for checking long term stability of clays let us move to the first test that is direct shear test direct shear test is also known as shear box test in this box which is having soil specimen it is very important to understand and fulfill it properly let us understand this experiment in this figure you can see an assembly which is showing direct shear test in this in the center portion you can see the blue box is there under that or in that blue box one soil specimen in the box is kept and dial gauges and proven ring are applied to that attached to that they will give different type of measurements and we also can apply normal stress as well as shear stress both to this specimen through this test let us understand procedure gradually first step is to attach base plate and box so you have to attach base plate one plate of metal with the box you have to place porous stones and grid plate on the box so whenever base plate and box is ready you have to put two porous stone and grid plate both on, under this then you have to wait for that the box and everything should be weighed place the specimen in the box so specimen or your soil which is prepared should be put in the box then you have to put again grid plate as well as porous stone on that and you have to fix a loading pad loading pad will do what it will distribute the load uniformly into the soil so you have to fix the loading pad and also upper half with proving ring so you have to set the box is generally in two parts in upper part you have to attach proving ring and in the bottom part you have to mount dial gauge then you have to place the weights and apply normal stress so in this figure you can see a black rod and weights are attached to that so these weights will provide normal stress to the soil specimen and it is told to apply horizontal shear at the rate uh, do remember the rate it is very slow 0.02 mm per minute you have to apply shear stress and continue up to 20% of the material will be strained so uh, when the box is strained almost up to 20 percentage till then you have to apply the shear stress as well as normal stress now after getting it strained you have to take it for water content determination in the lab and repeat the test and record a shear forces so you have to repeat the test with variation in the normal weight or uh, normal stress on that soil specimen and shear stresses will change so you will have a graph of values between normal stresses and shear stresses of different specimen so this is how you will prepare a graph from direct shear test 
and that will show us the failure envelope by Mohan. So let us keep our session up to this. We will learn different fundamental uh, experimental fundas of this chapter in the next video. Thank you.